it is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, I'm Rachel. I have just graduated from UC Berkeley in the class of 2020, where I double majored in cognitive science and legal studies. Today, we have a super exciting video coming up right now because we have guest starring today, Steve Schwartz, who is the founder of LSAT Unplugged, which is a blog, it's a podcast, it's a way to get LSAT tips and tricks, which is super exciting for me as I'm restudying to the restudying to take the LSAT right now. And you may have seen my other LSAT videos on this channel, but I'm super excited to introduce Steve today. Awesome, Rachel. Thanks so much for having me on. It's great to connect with you. Yeah. So Steve, if you want to tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So let's see. I'm from New York. I've been teaching the LSAT since 2005. I started my own LSAT journey back when I was considering law school myself, but I started teaching the LSAT in the meantime and loved it. So when I graduated college, that was the next natural starting point for me. So I started teaching the LSAT. I started LSAT blog. Then more recently, I started the LSAT Unplugged YouTube channel and podcast where I'm putting out tons of information every single day on everything LSAT and law school admissions. And so it's kind of nerdy, but it's a lot of fun. I love it. I love being a YouTuber like you, Rachel. And so it's been fun to explore just putting out material in this new way. Yeah, that's super awesome. So you mentioned that you took the LSAT, but then you didn't go to law school. Can you explain a little bit about your thought process behind that? Yeah, sure. Well, I was studying for the LSAT and I got super obsessed with it because it was this one exam that I just couldn't crack. And I spent an entire year studying for this thing before I finally got a 175. And in the process of studying for it, I became obsessed with it. I learned to actually love it and appreciate it. But my reasons for going to law school were kind of half-baked. It was kind of like, for lack of a better option, I thought at various points, maybe I'll be a college professor, maybe I'll be a high school teacher, maybe I'll go to law school. But my law school personal statement draft ended up being 90% why I didn't want to go to law school. And so I figured maybe I shouldn't go. And in the meantime, I had this LSAT career that I loved. And so I just kept that going. And then with the internet, things really snowballed, they really scaled, and I loved putting out material. So... I just continued with that and I've never looked back. That's super great that you found something that you're passionate about. And I feel like so many people can't say the same. And I've had so many professors throughout my college experience in the legal studies field who have all said that if you go to law school, like you need to make sure it's something you 100% want to do because all of my professors in college and all of my graduate and student instructors were all saying that law school was literally the worst time in their life. And so that's really good that you did it for yourself and you didn't like force something upon yourself that isn't meant to be. Yeah. I mean, you've got to really know your why for it. And if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And I think that's really true, especially if someone like you or I, where we're, we're, our YouTube channels or whatever we want them to be, right? Like we could do literally anything with it and it's our space. But if you go a, a certain predefined career path, then, and you're working for somebody else, you better make sure that you like what you're doing because there's not as much freedom within that, that area. But at the same time, if it's what you like, it could be okay. Yeah, awesome. So I guess, do you want to explain some about the LSAT resources and um, like consulting that LSAT Unplugged has? Yeah, sure. So I have the YouTube channel, the podcast, the Facebook group, the Instagram, and I'll send you the links for all of those. I'm putting out information multiple times a day. All of that's free. And so you can check that out and see if you like it. I've got interviews, classes, webinars, group coaching, tons of different things going on, personal statement workshops more recently. And then as far as premium offerings, I have courses that include on-demand on video lessons, live online classes and Q&As, and private group coaching sessions. I also do a bit of one-on-one. -on -one. I also have guides, like books, guides, cheat sheets, checklists, and explanations. So everything else and admissions, I've got it covered. No, that's super great. And my friend Kenny, who is on my YouTube channel a few weeks ago, if you all saw his law school reveal on this channel. He really spoke highly of Steve. He worked with Steve throughout his LSAT journey. So that is just probably one of the many testimonials of students who have worked with you and who have had a successful LSAT and law school application journey with you. Yeah, no, thanks for mentioning that. It's funny, Rachel, because I've come across your YouTube channel a, a, a quite a bit over the past couple of years. And then I saw Kenny on there and I was like, oh, Kenny, I worked with Kenny. That's incredible that you know him also. And so 
I connected with him and he made an introduction. And so that was really cool to see too. Yeah, Kenny's great. And I actually did a video with him as well recently. He had a great success story. He improved 10 points on his LSAT and is going to Loyola for almost a full ride. He's almost going for free. Yeah, it's a really, really great story. Definitely recommend checking out the video on LSAT Unplug channel with Kenny and also the video that I did with Kenny because you can learn about a lot of experience from a current law school, school student who is going to law school in the fall, what his application journey was like. And I think, Steve, for you, I think something for a lot of students who maybe are interested in going to law, but they're not really sure, like, do you have any advice for them about that? Yeah, I would definitely suggest doing some research. This is a big investment to go to law school, so make sure that you really want to do it. Talk with current practicing attorneys in the area that interests you and see what is a day in their life really like. It's not like TV and movies, of course. It's not as glamorous, not as dramatic, but it can still be fulfilling. But you got to know what it's actually like. Maybe you could shadow them for a day. Maybe you could just talk with them for 15 minutes and you'll learn a lot in the process. And if you could, if you, you could do that with five people or 10 people, it's work. It might feel a little bit uncomfortable to do the, those, that reaching out, but it could save you a lot in the long run. So it's, it's worth taking that time. And there's a lot of attorneys out there. So even if you have to email or reach out to a hundred of them to get 10 yeses, it's worth doing. And would you say for students, like I don't have any lawyers that I'm really friends with or anything like that, or for other students who maybe don't have family in the legal profession or friends, family friends, like how would they go about maybe making those connections or getting those opportunities to learn more about the legal field? You could even just go on LinkedIn, just go on LinkedIn and look for alums who went to your college. And that alone is enough of a connection. Okay, that's perfect. That's really, really great advice. I feel like so many students that I've talked to who are maybe unsure about if they want to go to higher education, graduate school after their undergrad careers are unsure of what steps to take or maybe they're a little bit nervous about reaching out to someone or doing that cold call or cold email. But definitely, if it's not something that should be frowned upon, it's not really weird, then that's what students should be doing. Definitely, definitely worth taking that time. It might, be, it might be tough, but also when you're an attorney, you want to generate business, it's going to involve networking and talking to people just the same. Yeah, yeah. So you can't be super shy about that if you want to be a lawyer, talking to a bunch of people, talking to clients all the time, every day kind of thing. And I think, Steve, it's really, really interesting how you were able to pivot from taking the LSAT to creating this business on your own. If you wanted to explain a little bit about that, because I feel like for me personally, that part is super interesting. Even though you have interest in the LSAT, you don't need to go to law school, but you are able to create something successful out of that passion and out of that interest? Yeah, sure. Well, it was just lots of experimentation and little iterations along the way. So when I was looking at, I was tutoring, I was basically getting clients through word of mouth a lot in New York City. And I wanted to start making a website, but I didn't know how to make websites. So I made a blog and blogs are simple to set up, but they also require updating. So I was like, you know what? I'll write an article once a week about the LSAT and just share whatever I know, not holding back anything. And back in 2008, there was very little online about the LSAT. It's such a niche topic. So my articles got found and people found them useful. And I was like, you know, you know what? I'll go from once a week to twice a week to three times a week, then five a week. And it just kind of built and built and built from there. So I just kept doing it and it was getting discovered. And I, you know, I got links other places. I did, I did guest blog posts and networked with people and wasn't afraid to ask for those connections. And I think that helped a lot. And then with YouTube, it was the same thing. It was like one video a week. Then it was one video a day. Now it's like five videos a day. And there, a lot of them are clips of other videos, but I'm just not afraid to put out information. And if it's useful, people share it. And I, I listen to people. I look, I look at what they're looking for me to create and I create it. I just ask the audience what they want. Yeah, 100%. That's really, really good advice. And honestly, super inspiring for me and probably for other people who are watching this video, maybe unsure about what their future holds or what they want to get into in the current situation. So I guess in closing, um, Steve, how can people find you? Is there any final words that you want to say? Yeah, sure. Well, folks can find me, Steve Schwartz, over at the LSAT blog, as well as the LSAT Unplugged YouTube channel, podcast, Facebook group, Instagram. Like I said, I'm putting out tons of information every day on everything LSAT and law school admissions. I've been tracking the LSAT flex changes very closely over the past several months because there's been a lot of 
policy changes with LSAC. And I won't get into the nitty gritty now, but the idea basically is that things are changing quickly. I'm staying on top of them. So follow me for the latest updates. As far as closing thoughts in general, I know a lot of your followers are probably studying for the LSAT, looking to go to law school. And so I would just remind them that while the LSAT as a whole is incredibly important, no one particular test date will make or break you. You can always retake. Law schools, with very few exceptions, do not average multiple scores. They only take the highest. And so it's not all riding on one particular test date, like the July LSAT flex or the August LSAT flex. Even November was, would still be fine to take it and apply this cycle. So just know that going in, that you have future chances also. Yeah, that's really, really good advice. I think for me, taking the LSAT the first time, I was super nervous and putting a lot of pressure on myself to make this a one and done kind of thing. Like, I need to ace this right now. Otherwise, like, I'm a failure or X, Y, Z. So I think that's really good advice for students to put everything into perspective. Like, one test isn't going to make or break us. One test doesn't define our value or intelligence. But I think, like, studying well and studying correctly and using Using resources on the internet will be super helpful for a lot of students. Exactly. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. So thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Definitely check out all of the links down below. Anything that we mentioned in this video will be linked down below and we will see you all next time. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.